Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping in for a Ham Shack Chat. In this video, we will be taking a look at both the FTDX10 and the FT710. Now, I had thought about doing two separate videos, but for what we're going to be covering today, they are so similar as to make that completely unnecessary. We are going to be taking a look at how to connect an external monitor, things to watch out for, and there is one biggie, and in the video description I'll be providing a list of monitors that I think would work well for you. This list is from my Amazon Associates account, so please read the disclaimer that I put right alongside the list. After we take a look at monitors, we'll be taking a look at connecting a mouse with a brief discussion of what I found out about connecting a keyboard. Following all of that, I'll be talking about the menu settings that you want for both the monitor and the mouse. By the way, the title of this video is in homage to the 1937 novel by John Steinbeck and the 1939 movie of the same name of Mice and Men, which starred Burgess Meredith, Betty Field, and Lon Chaney Jr. If you'd like to take a break from ham radio and have the appropriate subscription, it is currently streaming for free on the HBO Max channel. As always, any comments, questions, answers to my questions, and I did ask a few during the course of the video, any concerns you might have or just general remarks, you can leave them all down in the comments. Any questions, comments, snide remarks? No? Good. Here's a snapshot that I took from an earlier video of mine where I had these two rigs stacked on top of each other. And I'd just like to point out a few things. We're going to start with the mouse connections. That is right here. It's a USB type A input, which I currently have my wireless mouse receive side plugged into. There's a single port on the FT710 and two ports on the FTDX10. The mouse that I'm using is a pretty common one. It's a Logitech M310. M310. If you want to duplicate my setup, I put a link down in the video description to my Amazon Associates account. Please read the disclaimer in the video description. I have checked out a bunch of other mice in my shack and found it works with most of them. One of them, it certainly doesn't. I'll leave that up to you to decide, but if you find another mouse that works for you, please leave a comment down in the comments and I'll translate that up into the video description so that we actually get a nice list of those mice that work and those that don't. The owner manuals for both of these rigs state that you can plug a mouse or a keyboard in there. It does not mention whether it needs to be wired or wireless. I have not tried a wired device as of yet, but I'd appreciate your comments. As far as using a keyboard goes, the only thing in the owner's manual is the comment that you can plug a keyboard into your ports. It seems to be an OR statement. I don't know if that's an exclusive OR, but it just says a mouse or a keyboard. Also, from some of the other videos that I've watched where they discussed plugging in a keyboard, those people were not successful in actually getting that set up to work. And they kind of threw up their hands after a while. We're in good company. Again, the only mention of a keyboard aside from where you can plug one in on the back of your rig in the owner's manual is about the on-screen keyboards that pop up, which is not applicable to this particular video. If you have successfully integrated a keyboard into your system, I would be interested to know what type of keyboard it was, how you're using it, the functionality, but to be honest, right now I don't see a lot of value added in sticking a keyboard onto your rig. As an aside, I do have a wireless keyboard attached to my TS-890 and it seems to work just fine. 
I use it for RIDI and CW sending straight from the TS-890 and I can type in and store into different memories CW and RIDI messages. I can also freehand it and have a rag chew on that keyboard and that's kind of good and that's what I was expecting from these Jesus. However, Kenwood was able to integrate that appropriately in the TS-890. Now let's take a look at the external display ports. These are both DVI-D ports and there's a problem with these DVI-D ports because there are only a limited number of monitors available with DVI ports. A lot of folks are putting on adapters and that's not really a good idea and let me tell you why. In my research I came across a video where there is a gentleman who actually really talked well about the problem and I wanted to point out a few things. This is a screen grab from his video and I will put a link to his video in the video description. I'll put it at the end of this video in one of those little blocks you can check to watch next and also right up there in the corner if you want to go there now. This chip right here is an HDMI chip and they are wiring it such that its outputs are going through the DVI-D port. As it turns out, you can see from the pinouts an HDMI port and the DVI port have the same signals. The one that's causing us the most problems is right here. It's port 18 on the HDMI and 14 on the DVI. So here's your 5 volts in to 14 on the DVI and your 5 volts in to 18 on the HDMI. Here's the schematic for that circuit. So you see coming off of pin 14 on the DVI connector we come back up here, we've got a diode, and right here we have this 630 milliamp fuse. And that comes off of the DVI 5 volt line. If you take 5 volts and multiply it by 630, you get a hair over 3 watts of power. Although it's apples and oranges, an LED bulb rated at 3 watts is going to produce about the same amount of light as a 25 watt incandescent bulb. So the problem is this fuse right here which as I just showed you is that 630 milliamp fuse and if you use an adapter and plug it into the HDMI port on a monitor you can blow this fuse. If you just go out and buy yourself a standard cheapo DVI to HDMI adapter, the wirings are the same. The technology is the same. They're both digital signals. However, I believe that some monitors draw too much current from that 5 volt line that we showed you. That comes right here and goes out to pin 14 on the DVI connector. And because it exceeds the current rating of that fuse, it blows. It's the fuse box. Pull the red fuse. Yesu will not repair this under warranty. If you blow your fuse, you've blown your fuse. And you're going to have to pay for the fix or do it yourself. If you're going to do it yourself, make sure that you are really good at soldering and that you're familiar with surface mount technology. That is a whole different branch of soldering. Another thing is, if this fuse blows, there's a chance that this chip could have been damaged. Cost to replace the fuse is going to be much lower than the cost to replace the chip. If you use that cheap adapter that you can find all over Amazon and you're successful, again, a lot of people are. The easiest and safest thing is running a DVI to DVI cable out of the back of your rig and up into the DVI port on your monitor. If you feel like this video has some value to yourself or perhaps to your cohorts in the ham radio community, please share. I'm gonna tell her I'm here. And help me get the word out, especially on social media. If you're enjoying this presentation so far, please take a moment to pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. I like that. 
I like that a lot. That's We're going to start with the FTDX10. We go into our functions by pressing the function knob and we're going to switch over to the mouse and I'm going to click on display settings. Here in the main display sub menu, down here we have mouse pointer speed. Now I'm going to click on that. 10 is the default. It goes up to 20 and all the way down to zero. So at zero, it's still moving, but not very fast. I would recommend keeping it right around the default. Some people use 11. I just keep it on the default of 10. Now we're going to go to our external monitor selection here. And the default is off. And you can see my screen has gone away. So we'll turn that back on. And there we are. Down under the pixels, you have two selections. You've got 800 by 600 and the default of 800 by 480. As you can see, this fills up the entire screen. And this is what you would see on your monitor. If you select 800 by 600, you get open bars across the top and bottom. So those are your two selections there. I like a full screen, so we'll go back to that one. That way you fill up your entire screen. And we'll go back, and this is what I'm usually showing. Now that we looked at the DX10, let's look at the 710. Process is very much the same. We start by pressing on our function button to get into the function menu. But there's another thing that the DX10 won't do. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to grab my mouse, and I'm going to right click it. So a right click on the mouse brings up the function menu. That is exciting. We're going to come down here to our display settings, go to display. The mouse pointer speed is the same. It's zero to 20. Default is 10. I recommend staying at the default or a little above, a little below, whatever your comfort level is. External monitor. Now, right now, the default is off. However, I have it turned on. We've seen what happens when your external display is turned off. I lose this screen. And it went away. I'm not going to repeat that. Pixels are the same. Again, we have this bar across the top and across the bottom here that I don't care for. It does not show up on the rig. However, it will show up on your monitor that way. So we'll change this one to 800 by 480. Click on back and you can see that now we are fully there. Now I'm going to go back a couple times and use the mouse. I'm going to back and go back and you've got the full controls. So another thing, if you're in the function menu and right click, you can scroll through your options with the scroll wheel. You can select with the scroll wheel. As you can see, having a mouse on either the FT710 or the FTDX10 really can enhance your operating skills. Still not sure about that keyboard though. And there you have it. A quick presentation that I hope you've enjoyed and maybe you learned something from. I know that I enjoyed putting it together and doing the research behind it all. Please remember to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel. 73 until the next Hey Y'all! As always, I am at your service. This has been a Ham Shack Chat. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out. Hey, did you leave yet?